I want to take a quick minute to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. You can find out more about them at the end. Howdy, everyone. And that could not be a more fitting phrase because my word, is it warm in the UK? We're having a heat wave. Don't laugh because we've been over 30 degrees a couple of the days Celsius, I will add, before people do start to laugh. But it's just so excruciatingly hot that I couldn't do the jumping video I had planned for this week. You can tell how hot it is because Ace has got his rope across his door so he can get a little bit of a breeze in. So I didn't want to let you down and not make any new videos this week. I have got something really exciting coming up which is going to be about exercising your horses in the heat. Doing something I've never done before. But in the meantime, when it's not possible to do lots of jumping with the sun shining, I thought I would do a very highly requested video and that is answering the unanswerable because I asked on Instagram for some juicy questions this morning, all of the things you guys are dying to know about my life and you've not held back, which, you know, I do appreciate. I did say juicy, but my word are these plums ripe for the picking. For this video, I'm obviously gonna be cleaning tack, mostly because it makes it slightly less awkward than me just kind of sitting here being interviewed. Alter Design Saddles, I've got three to do. So that's how long the video is gonna be. Okay, so quick bit of proof, I'm on the question page. They really do go on and on. I think that's been up for about an hour and I've not made the bottom of it. So let's just get going. Okay, let's start with the most popular one, which is what has happened between you and Han? So, I mean, pretty much everyone's figured out that Han and I no longer live together. We were both living in my house for a year because I've only owned it for a year and a half. Um, but she recently moved out and my word, have the rumors been spreading that we've had a massive fallout. But I hate to break it to you, we, we haven't fallen out at all. Han has gone back to living with her parents and the main reason for that was because Pete moved in earlier this year and it's only a two bedroom house it was getting a little bit cramped and you know pete and i are getting on we're getting to a time in our lives where we need to see will we be happy uh, living together so yeah it was kind of a decision based on space and pete and i kind of moving our relationship forward so that's the reason han and i have by no means fallen out uh, we're still very good friends i still see her regularly and she'll still be on the channel Okay, this one says, I'm so nervous about going to uni in September. Any advice? So I feel like this would be quite a good one to answer. It's not particularly juicy, but I know it is something that's like a bit nerve wracking. I was so excited to go to uni, but also, I don't know, apprehensive is probably the right word because you have no idea what to expect. It's very different from school, but in all of the right ways. I mean, you're going to be doing a lot more independent learning. So there's going to be no one to chase you up on things. If you don't do stuff, it doesn't get done and you know, you lose nine grand. But it does give you a sense of urgency. I absolutely loved uni. I made so many amazing friends and for anyone who is nervous about going and worried about making new friends, I'd say it's a lot easier to make friends at uni than it is at school because you have got A, so many more people, but B, you've just got people from all over the country, all different walks of life, different hobbies, different interests. So yeah, I think it's actually a lot easier to make friends and you'll genuinely have the time of your life. If I could relive, especially my first year at uni. One of my favorite years in terms of uh, socializing. Have a cracking time, everyone that's going off to uni or everyone that's already at uni or everyone that's not at uni. Everyone have a cracking time in life. That's my phone. A lot of people have said, do you think Pete is marriage material? And I 100% do, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be with him if I didn't think that he was A, marriage material, and B, that I thought that we would get married at some point. Obviously a long way off, we've only been together just over a year, but yeah, I hope that we'll get married one day, otherwise I'm wasting my time. Should be out trying to find Harry Styles. Do you plan on moving up and competing bigger slash FBI? So, Yes, in short, but not going massive, massive. I'm genuinely, I'm not ballsy enough. When I walk an intermediate track, it makes me 
sort of like squirm inside a little bit. And that's just intermediate, it goes up from there. That being said, I would love to go novice one day. That is a kind of goal of mine. I would be absolutely thrilled if I can make it to novice. I'd love to go to Chatsworth. Chatsworth and Gatcombe are like two places I really want to compete at. I do genuinely think that Jammy could be my novice horse. And Ari and Winnie, in theory, should definitely have the potential to go novice. In terms of FEI, I think I'd definitely be keen to do a one star with Jam. Had I not gone to badminton this year, I probably would have aimed her at the off church one star, but it just, it came up a little bit soon because she was still recovering from her break. But the plan is to hopefully qualify her to go to the 100 at badminton, D to get 90, this is obviously in an ideal world. And then next year, I'll probably think about moving Jam up to one star, then novice. I don't know about a two star, that sounds crazy. So I've had, an astronomical amount of questions asking about money and YouTube and how it works with brands and this, that and the other. And I don't want to like divulge my entire salary. You know, the financial year is not over yet, guys. If I overestimate this and the tax man's watching, I'll go to jail. But I do understand that it's a very interesting thing for people to hear about because it's a bit of a weird job and Everyone gets paid differently on YouTube. I think that's why people struggle to wrap their head around it because it's such an odd way of earning an income. But yeah, I'm sure many of you know, I am a full-time YouTuber, influencer, if you want to say that word, I really don't. People are wondering if that's the only way I make my income and whether it's a stable income. So yes. That this is my only job. I obviously used to do a bit of pony producing, but I was rubbish at it on account of never wanting to sell them. So this is a much better job for me. And yeah, I'd say it is definitely a very stable income. So when I left university, I was looking at going into a graduate scheme um, for sort of town planning. And what I'm doing now pays significantly better than what that graduate job would have done. That being said, my job is extremely unreliable. It could get flipped upside down tomorrow. So it's kind of a enjoy it while I'm doing it, see how much I can get out of it. But I know that this might not necessarily be a job that's gonna see me through my entire career. But I do think that I've learned enough skills and sort of made enough contacts that I'll hopefully always be in the kind of media world, whether it's presenting or doing this kind of thing. So how does it work with brands? Being completely transparent, I would say 80% of the brand deals I do are paid. It works a little bit differently when you're working with sponsors. They'll kind of help more with like product, like with Voltaire Design, for example, or they'll kind of help out a lot with entries and training and paying for that kind of thing. Whereas when I do a brand deal with some clothing, more often than not, it will be paid. Because you do get to a point, obviously this is a business, I have to make money out of it and I can't pay my mortgage with a jumper. So yeah, the majority of the brand deals are paid. It's one of those ones where it really does vary and I know it sounds like I'm <laughs> trying to dance around the question, but genuinely the prices vary so much depending on the product. If you're doing, if you're working with a brand that's giving you really high value product, then you probably won't get paid for it. It does vary a lot, but yeah, I'm happy to say that a lot of the stuff that you guys see, for example, Squarespace sponsoring this video, that is a paid ad. Where did you and Peter first meet? Aww. You guys are very interested in me and Pete and I actually find it really cute because I'm very interested in me and Pete. So we actually met on Hinge, which is a dating app. We met up during the time when like not a lot was open. All you could really do was walk and go to, you know, like outside cafes or whatever. So yeah, we met up and we went on a walk. Like I saw one question that was like, was it really awkward? And it genuinely wasn't. I think that's, well, speaking for myself, that's how I knew it that it was kind of gonna go somewhere because we genuinely did click straight away and got on really well. So yeah, we went on a walk. Pete actually drove all the way from Oxford up to me. It was like an hour and a half drive. That was the other thing that I was like, big green flag because he was just willing to put in the effort from the word go and he still is, which is a big change to what I've been used to in previous relationships. 
We basically just went on loads of walks. The first like five dates were literally walks. And then we went to Broadway. <gasps> This is a secret, okay, right, this is a secret that even Hobbit doesn't know. This is the funniest. So we were going for walks around here and I wasn't telling my parents because, you know, it's, I, I didn't feel the need to tell my parents straight away. They kind of like knowing everything that's going on in my life and they start to ask questions. It gets annoying, so whatever. I was like, not telling my parents, just like disappearing off, going on little walks. And then it got to the point where we were really bored of walking around this area, so we wanted to go to Broadway because I've obviously invented there and it's absolutely gorgeous. However, that was gonna take longer out of my day. So I got Han to pretend that she was coming to Broadway with me and I just said, oh yeah, like we're going for a little like fun trip to Broadway. And in reality, I was going with Pete. Had a lovely time, whatever. And then further on down the year, we were actually going eventing to Broadway and Han was in the lorry and as we were driving there, Mum went, oh, look, there's Broadway Tower. Did you go up there, girls, when you came? And we were both like, what? And then the penny dropped that we had pretended that we came to Broadway together. So we proceeded to spend the rest of the journey talking about how we uh, went up to the top of the tower. Poor Han had never been to Broadway in her life, but she absolutely smashed it. She understood the assignment. And yeah, Mum didn't know that until now. How many times have you fallen off there? That's a quick one. It was only once and it was at badminton. We timed it beautifully. <laughs> okay, this is a question that I have never really answered on YouTube, but I asked it so many times and I feel like today's the day. Sorry, dress our saddle. What happened in lockdown when you made that video saying you were really down? Dun, dun, dun. Has anyone seen that video? Um, you guys might know the one, you might not. It was, what would it have been? Like April, May, 2020. So I made a video that I hadn't posted on YouTube for a good while because yeah, basically I was in a very long-term relationship. It was like over five years, nearly six years. Um, and we broke up and it did proper, hit me in the field. It was very, very difficult. Um, it was, I don't really want to say too much about the breakup because I feel like it's not really fair. All I will say is that it was the best thing that has ever happened to me. At the time, I thought I was sad because it wasn't meant to end. I now realize I was sad because I'd been with him since I was 18 and it was kind of all I knew, but it really wasn't a, relation, a good relationship for me. We did not compliment each other very well at all. And being with Pete really, really highlights that. And without being too rude, shows me, you know, how a relationship should be. And the things that I thought were normal are really very unacceptable. But yeah, I don't want to say too much, but that was the reason I'd come out of a long-term relationship. And yeah, it's horrible. Breakups absolutely suck. Even if it's the right thing to do, breakups really really are difficult um but use pete and i as living proof that it does get better genuinely it was the best thing that's ever happened to me i'm so much happier now and i'm just i'm a completely different person like i take more chances i'm really motivated now really into my job i feel like i've got this support bubble around me with pete and yeah I'm just so much happier now. <laughs> Honestly, if I could go and shake Meg, I was literally sat there. If I could go and shake previous Meg and be like, girl, stop your crying because you are gonna be more than fine. I would, but life doesn't work like that. But yeah, that was the reason, an exclusive. Do you ever wish you could go somewhere without being recognized? I think people think that like when I go out, it's like paparazzi. Um, but it, it genuinely really isn't. The only place other than like a very, like I've had the, like a few experiences where I've been like out in normal public, um, where I've been recognized, but normally it's only at like equestrian kind of events or whatever. And no, not at all. I really like being able to speak to you guys. I really enjoy it at events. I love doing meet and greets so much. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's ever something that I'm like, <sighs> Oh my God, I just want to live my life and be normal. Like it's, it's genuinely, if I'm at an event, someone might go, hey Meg. That's, that's the extent of it. I'd love to pretend that I'm really famous, but I'm really not. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to answer it. 
How much did you pay for all of your horses and how much are they worth now? Okay, right, I'm not gonna do all of them because let's face it, we'll be here for a year. So I'll do Jammy, D, and Bear because I feel like they're the, there's my sponge. They're the kind of main three. So who did I buy first out of that lot? It was D. So Dee Dee we bought from a dealer. She had literally just come over from Ireland. And I believe we paid £2,275. Don't quote me on this down to the final pound because I like to get things wrong. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that was what we paid. This is kind of before the horse market went absolutely bonkers, might I add. Then we bought Bear over Facebook. We didn't even see her. And we paid 1500 for Bear. I'm pretty sure it's 1500 And then Jammy, we imported her from Ireland. Again, unseen. She was one of the cheapest ponies. <laughs> In fact, no, she was the cheapest pony that the lady had. And for Jammy, we paid 17, 1750, I think. But bear in mind that she wasn't in the country. So we did have to pay to get her imported, which took it over 2000 pounds. And we also got the lady that was there to get her daughter to like sit on her. So she did two weeks of like groundwork and sat on her. So we also paid that as like a livery cost. So I think to get Jam actually you know, to our yard, it was probably like 2,200, I would say. I'm gonna do a saddle swap before I say what I think they're worth. Okay, it's the final saddle, which means we're getting down to the final questions. So what are they worth? I feel like this is so subjective because they're my babies. I am obviously gonna think they're worth like a million pounds, but I'll try and be kind of realistic and also take into account the crazy horse market at the moment. It's almost gone bonkers. So Dee Dee, I would say she's actually worth the least because of her hocks. She's got a bit of arthritis in her hocks. Although well, saying that, so many horses do. Um, but you know, she's obviously very established at 100 and she's also the easiest to ride. Like anyone could take her around in 80, that's for sure. So I would say Dee is probably worth 15 grand, I reckon. Um, Bear, again, it's hard to say because at the minute she's literally a table. She is a picnic table and they're not worth that much. Um, so yeah, Bear is, is tricky to say, but when she was being ridden, we did turn down an offer of 25,000 for Bear and that was before the horse market boom. Um, I just, I honestly can't bring myself to sell her. I love her so much. That would have paid off a big chunk of my mortgage. Um, but yeah, so. Let's say 25,000 for Bear. And then Jammy, my baby. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna base this off of some knowledge that I do have. So the horse that came second at badminton, so one place before Jam, I'm pretty sure it was on the market for 35 grand, which is an awful lot of money. And I don't think it stuck around there for that long. So I have my suspicions that it did sell for close to that. So I'm gonna say for Jammy, 30 grand, because I do think, you know, she's a very good badminton grassroots horse and personally do believe that she has got novice potential. So, wow, look at all that money. I could pretty much pay my house off. I'm not gonna do it though. You guys are really interested in how much money I make. <laughs> I feel like it's one of these things that I don't really want, like it feels a bit awkward to actually say, but a lot of people saying like, can you live comfortably off of your social media wage? Like, yes, like it's definitely, it's very much a, a good wage. Like it's not like a, I don't have to live frugally. Like it's, it's the same as having like a, a good proper job. How long do you see yourself continuing to make and produce videos for YouTube? That's a good one. We're on the last side of the saddle as well. So I feel like it is a tricky game with YouTube and I do find it very, very draining. Like it's super stressful doing it. I know people don't think it is, but genuinely like I do work seven days a week from the moment I get up to the moment I go to sleep, I'm doing bits of work. Obviously I come and do my horses in between, but there is like a bit of a crossover. They are kind of partly my job. 
but it's just non-stop like the editing the admin the planning videos liaising between brands and sometimes it can be such a nightmare guys so i did this video once for a brand sent it off and they sent me back loads of changes they wanted making so I made all those changes, resent the video, sent it back. They said, no, 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 we want actually these changes made it, making. At this point, the original footage, I managed to lose somehow, but I was like, it's fine, because they didn't like that first video. Anyway, so I send them back this, what was this now, a third draft, and they went, mm, actually, no, we much prefer the first one. We want to stick with the first original video. Obviously, at that point, I had lost the footage, so it was an absolute nightmare. I ended up paying about £200 for this software that could somehow kind of regain this footage. I think my hard drive had packed up or something. So it can just be really stressful and full on, and sometimes you feel like everything's going against you, and you can put your all into doing a video, and then it gets no views. And it, yeah, it sometimes does just get a bit demoralizing. Sorry for being such a Debbie Downer right now. It is amazing. I do absolutely love my job and it's taken me places I never imagined. And I do want to do it for as long as I possibly can, but I'm trying to show you guys the kind of other perspective that you probably don't see a lot. Along with that also does come like all of the hate you get online. I'd say I'm quite lucky. I don't get that much. I'm very strict with myself now. There are these like anonymous forums that you can go on and you can, read pages and pages of stuff about you and I'll hold my hands up and say I did used to go and look and oh my word it genuinely like really I got me down it's the only way to answer it it just it started to affect my day-to-day -day life and I don't know if people writing these comments think it does because it doesn't even need to be a nasty comment but it's really weird to read things about yourself and it it's made me realize like what celebrities go through with the tabloids because that's like on another spectrum but yeah it does sometimes get you down and it starts to like affect your relationships in real life and that was the point where i was like hold on i've read something this morning and now i'm being really grumpy with pete and i eventually realized the connection so yeah i'm really strict i do not go on those forums we obviously had that incident <laughs> like a few weeks ago where someone chose to screenshot me a message which I mean the less said about that the better because I'm starting to think that there was a bit of foul play with that one I've not really answered the question now have I so how much longer I don't know I, I really I genuinely don't know like in the perfect world I would love to keep doing this for like up to another five years potentially but you know, it could all come crashing down tomorrow. Equally, I could just keep absolutely loving it and doing it for like another 10 years. I genuinely just don't know at this stage, but at the minute, I absolutely love my job and I want to keep doing it. I really enjoy doing the presenting and working with TV companies. So yeah, I do absolutely love it, but who knows with the YouTube side of things. Hopefully, I've definitely got a few more years left in me, but I will always, always, always put my mental health first and I have, had episodes where I've gotten really, really stressed and gotten quite ill from trying to do too much in one day. So yeah, I do need to learn to actually do a little bit less sometimes. The vet has arrived. So final question is whether I'm going to be getting a new horse or any more youngsters. And the answer to that is quite possibly. I may be planning a trip to Ireland at the end of the year to do a little bit of pony shopping. But it does depend on circumstances here. I need to basically sell Dora if I'm gonna do that. So yeah, it's making that decision, but I need to go and let the vet in. So that is all for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I live, laugh, love you. Hope it was entertaining and I hope I've not said too much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So I did briefly mention at the start of this video that it is very kindly sponsored by the amazing Squarespace. Now, if you don't know who they are, it's fine, I'm gonna tell you, do not worry. So if the thought of designing your own website kind of scares the bejesus out of you, but you know your business or your hobby would really benefit from it, then Squarespace is the place for you because they have extremely powerful tools, but they're incredibly user-friendly and also create the most beautiful websites. And I promise, 
anyone can do it. Squarespace has loads of cool features which will allow you to connect with your audience. You can generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. You can also really easily hook up your social profiles to your website, meaning you can automatically push website content from your favorite social media channels so all of your followers can share it too. Squarespace are all about creating a community and with the website's fully integrated commenting systems that supports threaded comments, replies and likes, you can easily connect Connect with your entire community. You can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share and schedule posts too. Why not extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions? They may sound scary, but they're amazing new third-party tools that can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax and ship items across the globe. So if you think that Squarespace may just be for you, you can head to squarespace.com, have a play around, and if you decide to create a website, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Elphic, get yourself a cheeky 10% off your first website or domain. What are you waiting for? Get website making. <laughs>